Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to the studio. In today's video, we are going to be doing a watercolor painting of a cupcake. That's right, going into the month of August, I am going to be pushing myself to paint more, and I've chosen to do desserts as the subject for the whole month. So, I am going to sketch in a cupcake here, and I hope you guys join along and sketch with me. So, started off with four watercolor pencils. These are Artist Loft. And I chose the Artist Loft pencils because I also had Artist Loft paints, thinking that the color names would match up. But yeah, I was wrong about that. So, catching up, I sketched in the cupcake wrapper in blue, the cake in clay yellow, lavender, made my icing layers. And I do believe it's dark brown that I use for the drizzled chocolate icing layer. Now, guys, what you see me doing here is refining, refining, excuse me, my sketch. Um, I've come to realize and learn that the more you work on refining and getting an accurate sketch in the beginning, the better the composition is going to come out in the end. So I took a water brush here and I just dispensed that blue pigment out. Um, to create my base layer and then in the paints I'm using Prussian blue because there is no ultramarine included in the Artist Loft 12 tube set um, And I'm going to mix it with the cobalt I believe that's what was in there and that's what I use in order to create start to create the darker shadows for my cupcake wrapper I'm going to go ahead and refine that a little bit with some watercolor pencils And then I also use that watercolor pencil to etch in the texture that you see in the wrapper around the top after that, I moved on to using that same water brush to just dispense the pigment of the lavender used to paint the icing. And here I am taking that same lavender pencil and painting directly from the lid just to start adding in the shadows of the icing. Next, I'm grabbing some crimson directly from um, the palette in, of paints and I'm dripping that directly into the wet background in order to start creating some depth. And then I'll use the water brush to just dispense the pigment and those cherries painted on top, which um, I did with the lavender pencil. You know, now that I'm actually looking back at the speed paint and doing this voiceover, I realized that this could have very easily been like a Sunday as well. Hmm. Maybe that's a painting for another day. But anyway, so here you're going to see me grab that water brush and I am dispensing uh, dispersing. I don't know why I said dispensing. And if I said dispensing before, I really didn't mean to. Yeah, going crazy. Dispersing that pigment. And then I use yellow ochre from my paint palette to match in order to give it a little bit more color depth. Now I'm going to disperse the pigment in the dark brown watercolor pencil that was used to draw on the drizzled chocolate icing and I was being really sure to be careful to go around my highlighted areas because I really did want to make sure that um, I continued to work on adding dimension and realism to my paintings. I'm really doing my best to grow guys and I really hope you guys are enjoying going on the journey with me of learning and painting and just being artsy and crafty and I hope that you are doing the same because we should be working side by side to grow and become better artists together that's what this uh, channel was started for remember so yeah now i'm going to go in and really add in the depth to the cake make sure it stands out and i wanted to make sure that it rolls above the wrapper enough um now i'm going to take some crimson once again and i'm going in to start adding in the shadow for the layers of icing now this part was okay but what I did next was outline the outer edges of that icing, which was the first mistake I made and where things started to go a bit wrong for me. I'm going to move on and use that crimson in a very heavy consistency and start to add in the real deep colors of my cherries. At this point, I wanted to start making them look round and full, um, giving them more dimension and you know, a little bit more realism, make them look like they kind of popping off the page a little bit. I was sure to be careful and paint around my highlighted areas again because I'm trying to maintain that realism. So now here is where the mistake really, really, really jumped in. So my attempt here was to take that crimson and paint in the shadows of flutes, you know, like the fluting of the icing 
the, the little shapes that it make, the shadows that's under there in order to make those shapes stand out. Well, that was the attempt I was making, but it in no shape, form or fashion turned out the way that I wanted it to. Um, but I decided to press on and keep going. Even after flipping and turning the paper and drawing upside down and right side up, I just did not see the image that I was originally going for. So I just decided to extend those lines all the way up to the darker shadow under each icing section and thought to myself, we'll keep adding, we'll fix it in the end. So now I'm going to go in and add in the final layer of um, brown on top of the drizzled icing section. And guys, you have to excuse me. I do have um, a bit of raspiness in my voice. I've had a bit of a little sinus issue going on, but it is getting better. So we won't have this raspiness soon or for long, should I say. All right. So we're just getting that filled in again, being sure to go around. Uh, the highlighted areas. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. So now I'm going to go ahead and start to add in the brown to the top of the cake. You know, um, the cupcakes are kind of like golden brown and they have that browner section directly on top. So that's what I was going for emulating here just so that there'll be a division in color. And then I'm going to take that same brown and mix it with some crimson in order to draw on the stems of my cherries. Now, I have to be honest, I was having a lot of fun. And as I watched this video back, I realized just how much fun it was to paint this. And I hope you guys really, really give it a try. So now we're going to go ahead and add in uh, the shadows on the cupcake wrapper a little bit deeper. I'm going to take a mixture of the Prussian blue and kind of mix it with some, um, oh, what was that I used? The burnt umber. Nope, burnt sienna, Prussian blue and burnt sienna to make a gray. And that gray is going to be used to enhance the shadows of my cupcake wrapper. I wanted to see more roundness, more, more realness, more 3D to it. And I think this really kind of added to that effect that I was going for. Next, I'm going to take this water brush and I am going to with the paper around the bottom of my cupcake wrapper in order to add that same gray in and ground my focal image to the background so it doesn't look like it's just floating out there in space. So, no gel pen. Didn't want to pull out the uh, gouache. So the next best thing was my opaque Prismacolor to the rescue. And I'm going to use this to add in shadows, although, uh, add in highlights, excuse me. Although I really do honestly think the gel pen would have been a much better bit if I had one, but I don't. So we have to use what we have, right guys? That's why this Prismacolor um, colored pencil is being used. It's probably the most opaque colored pencil I know. And after adding that highlight to the flutes, it started to look a little bit better. I mean, still nothing like I really, really wanted it to be, but not too, too bad at all. Now here I'm going to go in and use that same gray just to round out the side of those cherries and make them stand out from one another. So you can see that one was in front of the other. And uh, now I'm going to paint in a little bit darker shadow up under the cupcake. Then you're going to see me sign the painting. Hopefully you guys like what you saw. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and remember, just keep painting.